Did you listen to music in the car? Can you hear the beat in music? Do you enjoy going to concerts? I guess most of you will say yes. Now, imagine you are deaf and you hear music through an electrical device implanted in your ear, which uses a maximum of 22 electrodes to do the job of the 20,000 auditory cells of a healthy ear. How easy would it be to recognize your favorite song? Possibly like trying to recognize John Lennon from the photo on the right. This device is called the cochlear implant. Users of cochlear implants report that they find it difficult to identify musical instruments, that music does not sound as it should, and that they don't listen to it much. However, it is suggested that if we train the brain to hear music, we may actually improve music understanding and enjoyment. A music training program for this purpose has been recently developed here at the University of Southampton. But how can we know if this training actually helps? Although we have music tests to be used in the lab, there is no measure to evaluate the benefits of music training in real-world, everyday listening situations. The purpose of my PhD is to fill this gap by developing a questionnaire to assess how well cochlear implant users perceive music, how they feel about it, and how often they participate in musical activities. No study so far has approached the relationship of cochlear implant users with music from such a broad perspective. A series of group discussions with adult cochlear implant users that I carried out shed light on new dimensions of music experience, such as the recognition of lyrics, the confidence to sing, and the participation in fitness classes. By assessing these, we can understand the challenges of cochlear implant users with music better, and we can assess the effects of music training more accurately. Based on data from these discussions, I have developed a draft questionnaire, which will be improved and validated through online and postal surveys with professionals, cochlear implant users, and normally hearing adults. If we can demonstrate the validity of the questionnaire, we can then make it available for use to researchers and clinicians. The new questionnaire will assess the real-world benefits of music training for cochlear implant users. If we can prove that music training is effective, clinicians will be more easily convinced to provide more music rehabilitation, which may improve the quality of life of the patients. And improving the quality of life of individuals is the ultimate goal of any form of intervention, isn't it?